All right, everyone, I thought it was time for just a general 4th of July message. I'm sure that a lot of other people will be putting it out there. Uh, so while you're eating your, your hot dogs or if you're, you know, vegan or something, your veggie burgers or your, your kale salad and smoothies or whatever, your kale chips with a side of kale salad and then a kale smoothie as well. But you're going to splurge today. You'll put cranberries in it or <laughs> something like that. While you're eating your sumptuous feast of carnality, uh, keep in mind that uh, the 4th of July really celebrates, in the revolutionary sense, uh, a group of people fighting against their own government because of attempts at disarmament and excessive taxation. And then you can sort of extrapolate that to the modern era. By the way, I am very, very happy that I'm not British. Because looking over at the UK, where people, where the press is muzzled by courts all the time, and people are harassed by their own government, and in fact reviled by their own government figures, um, for having basic beliefs in freedom uh, against censorship. Uh, it's, it's a vile political system that the UK currently suffers under. They're still, you know, hundreds of years later and they're still under the yoke of tyranny and now it's in their own islands. You know, it's, no, it's no longer the tyrannization of some far off colony, it's just the tyrannization of the British people at large and maybe they should probably stage a, a few protests and pickets of their own, but I don't know if there's any lifeblood left there to cause that to happen, unfortunately. These days, our big generational struggle against tyranny, because every generation has one, it's really against censorship. It's not against a government, although that's part of it, it's partnered with the government. It's really against fascistic corporate firms that are trying to determine the course of human history and ingenuity by telling people what is or is not acceptable to say and believe. Uh, it shouldn't be happening. We will eventually be victorious. It's just a matter of how many martyrs are, uh, there are along the way. By martyrs, I mean people that are completely scrubbed off the face of the earth because they're deemed guilty of wrong think by some random billionaire in California. That's really what it's about. It's really what it boils down to. It's just as insidious. Don't think that there's any real difference in the importance of this particular battle. It's not being fought with guns and fists. Well, Antifa fights with fists because they're backwards, but it's more fought with keyboards and, and slogans, to tell the truth. It's just as important as the revolution in some ways. It's a fight against tyranny, which is ongoing. We shouldn't even look at it as the revolutionary war. We should just look at it as a, an outbreak of violence against the same strain of human authoritarianism and misery and tyrannization that's been going on since day one. I mean, fucking literally. Since there has been the concept of organizational structure within the human race, going back long before the concept of the nation-state, even before the city-state, since the idea of an organized tribal system, a la the, the, the pre-copper age, essentially, uh, commensurate with building primitive mud, mud and stick walls and, and dauble buildings and things of that nature and having the basic idea of a city layout, uh, going back to the times of Gobekli Tepe or something like that, there's always been the problem of tyranny. There's always been the problem that somebody is trying to get one over on others. Human greed takes a toll. Uh, malevolence, violence, and mass, sad, uh, sadistic personalities, they've all become problems. Now, when we instituted a constitution, when we threw off the British yoke and decided to make our own way in the world, we tried to limit the influence and power of government through a constitution in order to prevent some of the problems that had been witnessed. The problem is that that constitution was not applied to private enterprises. It wasn't applied directly to bureaucratic principles. It was applied to government specifically. I think that now that we're in another age, and we're in an age when states now, you know, in some cases are arguably less important than some of the private structures that have been made, Perhaps those private structures, at least in part, should be subjugated to a constitution as well. Perhaps the U.S. Constitution should be amended specifically to state that some of the protections uh, should be extended to people against private enterprises. That groups of people no more have the right to tyrannize others, even if they are private and have been unelected, than if they were elected and had a position of actual authority under the legal system. Because it's a de facto authority. If a monopoly springs up in human communications that controls an inordinate proportion of all human speech, not just here but in the world, how is it less damaging if they tyrannize people's free speech or expression? How is that less damaging than if the government did? Arguably, it's more damaging. They're a multinational firm. If Google decides that certain types of political speech are not allowed on search, 
blogs, YouTube, uh, any of its goods and services, the App Store, and so forth. It affects more people than if the U.S. government made a similar decision. But we have no protection under the Constitution, at least directly. Uh, we do have laws against it. They're just not being enforced by Congress because they've been bought off by the tech firms. If they do so, though, it's more damaging. It affects billions of people, not just a few hundred million who happen to inhabit this one country. It even affects people within the U.S. government. It certainly does. We see that now. We see that with Twitter. Twitter making the decision it's now going to demote and put up a wall between you and certain government officials if they say things that Twitter happens not to agree with. Well, that's a it's tyranny. The company there is affecting more people than even just the U.S. population. It's more insidious. It's no longer just a nation being tyrannical. It's a group being tyrannical that affects all nations, potentially. At least those that are part of the Internet at large. It doesn't affect China. They've got their own tyranny. It doesn't affect North Korea. They've got like 200 operative computers in the whole country. Uh, other than that, yes, it fundamentally affects them all. And I think Turkmenistan has an intranet or something. I've never had anyone connect to my YouTube channel from Turkmenistan. I'm going to assume that there's probably a reason for that. I think, don't they have like a pseudo-religious sort of book that they have to memorize in place of like otherwise the Quran, because I think they're mostly Muslims? Like the little green book that their leader or former leader or something wrote, and it's like full of aphorisms and, you know, philosophical stuff. Isn't that, I think that's the case in Turkmenistan. I can't remember exactly. It might have been a different country in Central Asia, but I'm pretty sure it was Turkmenistan. But yeah, happy 4th of July. Keep up the fight, because the, the, it's a generational struggle. The last generation had to deal with the fact that uh, they were trying to crack down on music. They were trying to crack down heavy metal, goth scene, punk rock and stuff. Prior to that, they were trying to crack down on people's ability to use mind-altering substances, protest against war, and so forth. Prior generation there, you have communism, you have fascism, you have basically everything you have to fight against. Everything came to a head. Prior to that, you have the, the fight against uh, certain strains of globalization, early globalization, and the strain of all the weird diplomatic and bureaucratic entanglements of Europe with the uh, First World War. Prior to that, I mean, you have the slavery debate. And you have everything fucking for thousands of years has been going along this way. Every generation has a different fight to wage. Usually, I think, you know, for the most part, things move in a positive direction. But in order for that to keep happening, we have to be willing to fight. We should perhaps be most thankful that this particular fight is ideological and takes place on cyberspace and with stickers and, and banners and marches and things like that, as opposed to groups of people shooting at one another largely. I think in that sense, we might be lucky. So, you know, we should keep fighting. It's, it's also easier. The, the tragic irony is using the platforms that are actually being censored to try to fight censorship, which is why alt-tech is so important. Alt-tech desperately needs to branch out into the financial sector and do everything possible to try to safeguard and guarantee that independent creators that utilize their services are continuing to be able to do so because they're able to make some sort of living doing so. Because you do need some people to be able to organize what's going on. Otherwise, you know, it's basically taking a flying fuck at a rolling donut. That's about all. Peace out.